A majority of the misinformation about the COVID-19 vaccine spread online can be linked to just 12 social media accounts. That is a finding of a study done by the Center for Countering Digital Hate. Those 12 have been dubbed the disinformation dozen. And to talk about this, we have the CEO of that center with us here this evening, Imran Ahmed. Thanks so much for your time and, and sharing more information about this study. And that's where we'll start. What did the study look at and how was this conclusion reached that all of the misinformation we've seen could be linked to those 12 accounts? Well, good evening. I First of all, the, the phenomenon of anti-vaxxers and the fact that a small number of individuals are creating the majority of the misinformation that we see, that's been known for some time. We've known that professional, that anti-vaxxers have become a professional industry who produce misinformation that's incredibly compelling and that is designed to be shared as well. And what we did is we looked at the number of shares of misinformation on social media platforms. We found that 65% of the shares were of material produced by just 12 individuals. So 12 individuals are producing 65% of the most shared information out there. When we, when we put that research together and sent it to both Congress and the social media companies, well, you can imagine it caused quite a stir. Is it just anti-vaccination that we're talking about, though, or is it just or is it misinformation and, and hate in general that's being spread across digital platforms? Well, it's always been known that a small number of individuals create the, the bulk of the biomass of uh, misinformation and hate. So we've seen this across identity based hate, misogyny. Uh, anti-vax, uh, climate change denial, small numbers of individuals can really disproportionately affect the debate and can shape what people see. Because, look, it comes down to this, social media platforms are designed to reward only one thing, engagement. Engagement, whether negative or positive, the more effectively crafted the controversy around a post, the more that you get seen, essentially. And these folks have just mastered that. Now, these are not individuals. They actually have behind them companies, 501c3s, charities, um, and all sorts of uh, different institutions which they control, which either produce the material or are used as fronts to send that material out. And as we continue our conversation, I want to mention to people watching, if you go to counterhate.com, that's where you can find more information about these 12 accounts, the organizations behind them, uh, so people can dig into that more if they would like to. So your organization, the center here, identified those 12 accounts. You said you reached out and to some of these platforms, social media platforms. What was the reaction and what are the next steps that the center is trying to take to stop the spread of this? Well, look, we'd always hoped that the platforms would respond to uh, a clear case, clear evidence that there are harms being created on their platforms. Because, of course, who wouldn't? If your business was causing a lot of harm, you would feel a moral responsibility to take action. They have singularly failed to do so again and again and again. And even though this time, of course, they had access to the, the, the research that we produced, in fact, they were questioned about it by members of Congress. Twelve attorneys general from different states wrote to them saying, have you seen this report? You need to take action on these on these individuals. You can't be amplifying dangerous voices who, in the midst of a pandemic, seek to undermine our capacity to deal with it, because vaccines, of course, are the best, safest, most effective way of ending this pandemic. We had uh, members of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, senators write them again, asking about the report, saying, what are you going to do about it? And they have simply failed. Of the 12, uh, the disinformation dozen, they controlled 89 social media accounts. Only 29 have had action taken against them, despite the platforms. Mark Zuckerberg in person, in Congress, saying that he would take action immediately. And they still have 60% of the followers that they had at the start of this. So even though they've taken action, and I commend them for doing so against the 40%, that's a recognition on their part, of course, that those people were spreading misinformation which contravened their terms and conditions, their community standards, which keep us all safe. But yet they fail to take comprehensive action. And that's in part because, look, social media companies, they're advertising businesses. The more content they have, the more money they can generate. And they're loath to get rid of any bit of content, even when it's content 
that can put lives at risk. One final question for you, uh, as brief as you can be because we're running out of time, but what can the average person do who's not a senator, who's not with Facebook or some of these other big social platforms? What can the average person who's upset about the spread of this mis mis misinformation do right now? First of all, you can come and uh, look at the, the stuff that we have on counterhey.com, our Twitter, CCD hate and amplifiers. The second thing you can do is if you see misinformation, this is an attention game. So first of all, ignore it. Second, block people that are sending it to you. And third, go and find some good information from the CDC, from an agency that's designed to be there to protect the public and engage with that instead. Because the best gift you can give someone in the midst of a pandemic is the gift of good information. The disinformation does, and certainly eye-opening when you take a look at all of that information the center has put out. Imran Ahmed, thank you so much for your time. CEO of Center for Countering Digital Hate. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. We'll be right back.